Breast cancer is becoming more common and common day by day, every year. Today, we have 120 uh, patients every year per 100,000 population. But it's going to increase to more than... Sir, you were the first person to bring bone marrow transplant to this country. So can you share that experience with us? About in 1980 or so. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Ravi Jaiswal, cancer specialist in Raipur. And my dear friends, today I have with me Professor Padma Shri Padma Bhushan, Dr. Suresh Advani sir from Mumbai, right here in Raipur. Dr. Suresh Advani, he needs no introduction. He's a trailblazer. He is still practicing at the age of 80. He is the person who did first bone marrow transplant of this country. He is widely regarded as the father of medical oncology in this country. My dear friends, we have this opportunity to interact with Professor Advani. Welcome to Raipur, sir. Thank you very much. How are you feeling being in Raipur today? Very well. I think that I, I have come here once before, but it has changed. So I think I'm so happy to be here. So uh, uh, in this podcast, I will ask you a few questions and uh, uh, we would like to know more about you and your insights, your personal insights also in the field of oncology. So the first question that I want to ask you is you have six decades of experience in oncology. So what changes do you see in these six decades have happened in this country? I think uh, as any other science and uh, our country has changed, similarly, the oncology has undergone many revolutions, landmark changes, where there was nothing and today we have everything, multiple choices. That's what has happened. There were diseases which were incurable. Today they have become curable. So I think the transformation is rapidly occurring. It is going to occur. The treatment has become simple, is less toxic, easily accessible for many of the patients. And I'm sure that I will probably see another revolution where it will be within the reach of every person in India. Sir, you were the first person to bring bone marrow transplant to this country. So can you share that experience with us? About in 1980 or so, we were uh, uh, trying to do uh, something about the changing treatment in blood cancer. That's where uh, Sunil Dutt, our famous oh. hero, was very much interested. So we were reading about the bone marrow transplant. So that's the time I thought I'm reading about it. He was t trying to tell us that write a nice story. I say first, let me go and experience. So I went to Seattle, which is a mecca of bone marrow transplant. Spend uh, time with uh, Dr. Donald Thomas, who ultimately received the Nobel Prize for his work in the bone marrow transplant. And uh, I, after coming back, we started working on the preparing for the transplant. And the first successful bone marrow transplant, we did it within a year of my return. And Amazing. that was the beginning. So that's how it was. Amazing. Sir, so by these 60 years of professional experience, you must have treated lakhs and lakhs of cancer patients. And I remember every patient that comes to me, he comes for it, he goes for a second opinion to Professor Advani. So, is there one patient, one story that is closest to your heart that you still remember that you would like to share with us? Yeah, I must say that we must have seen tremendous uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, experience in the sense that every day we see something which is not usual. That's what is the oncology is. Every day you will see something which does not fit in with the normal. And that's why we call it, it's all for the 
healer yeah. up there who is healing the patient. And I can tell you one story. This patient came from Indo, a young lady, and the husband was there. He was very devoted to her, and she had acute myeloid leukemia, one of the leukemia which was not very easily treated. So we started treating her, and uh, she was responding. But some of these patients develop severe neutropenia, and then the infection settles in. That's what happened to her. And she was quite, we can critical. And everybody they said, well, you know, patient is bad. One day at night, the night I was leaving from the hospital, my husband came running to me, please come and see her. I said, what happened? He said, she has become unconscious. I find, I just went and saw her. She was drowsy. A little bit unconscious, but uh, and that was the time where she was receiving all antibiotics. He asked me a question. He says, "Can I take her back home?" Or she is dying. That's the time I thought, "How can we give up a young lady like this? We can't give up." But then condition was critical. Also, so I just told her. Nice one. Give me one day. Tomorrow we'll see. I'm going home. Next day, you should have seen the husband coming to me, hugging me. And I so well doing. He got up. He says, after your visit, she's sitting up. She's yeah. today morning. She's eating. So I think these are the things which happen in the life. You have to. One thing which I realized: you never give up hope. that's a fantastic story so in our country we see lot of cancers in advanced stage what message would you like to give to our viewers for early detection what they should do simple thing so that they can come to doctor visitors early i think uh, we have to sensitize the population as well as the doctors i think that's the most important Patients don't think of cancer. They get something they think is usual. They get blood bleeding from the rectum. They think it's muscle fibers. They cough the blood out. They will be thinking some infection. So, if they feel some lump, ladies feel the lump in the uh, breast. They say must be uh, during the child during the child bearing age. It must be that and that. There is no pain, so no cancer. That's how we look at it. So these are the things which are myths, which I think we have to make them aware that for all these things may not be cancer, but must go to the doctor to rule out. Similarly, I think many of the doctors also tend to neglect this. They say, "Lump, nothing is there. Don't worry." 90% of the time they may be right, but 10% of the time. So they must also investigate rather than just telling that they are done. So I think at every level we have to make the people aware because cancer is becoming more common and common day by day. Every year the incidence of breast cancer is increasing by 2%, and uh, today we have. 120 uh, patients every year per 100,000 population, but it's going to increase to more than 150 in another five years. So by 2030, our incidence will be very high. So I think the most important thing is create awareness. That's what is going to. So when you used to practice earlier. at that time the treatment options used to be chemotherapy radiation surgery now with this decade or so immunotherapy has become the buzzword so what are your thoughts about immunotherapy and what do you think where the, this therapy is going to take the future of oncology to i think there is a total change previously we had the chemotherapy which was non specific 
affecting the normal cells as well as abnormal cells. We had a radiotherapy where there was a sort of a train that gave more and more wide field radio. Similarly, the surgery, more and more wide surgeries. That was the concept of surgery, radiotherapy. <laughs> Today, the concept has changed. It's more, we call it personalized and uh, precision. So, we are giving less and less of radiotherapy. We are giving very conservative surgery. We are also having the drugs which act only on the tumors. That is what we call it targeted. Apart from that, as you said, the new buzz is about the immunotherapy. And I think this is going to change the whole medical oncology. It has already changed, but it's going to come more and more. Like we have in immunotherapy, the drugs which go and uh, give the instruction to our immune cells to eliminate the tumor cells alone. So I think that's a big thing. It's like a targeted therapy, but indirect. So I think immunotherapy is going to be a big, but apart from this immunotherapy, a few more things are coming up, like CAR T cell therapy, which is engaging the T cells to the tumor cell and destroying the tumor cell. So I think that's going to be there. And there are many more which are going to come. So while you speak, I can see that energy, that spark, that passion within you. So sir, at the age of 80, how do you maintain your work-life balance? Because I have heard from uh, your uh, subordinates, your team members, that you still work late in the night, you get up early, all the time you see the patients. So how do you maintain, how does Professor Advani maintain work-life balance? I think it's very simple. I enjoy working. Not working otherwise, but working with the patients, talking to the patient. That's my sort of a passion. For me, passion, it's a sort of a hobby. If I don't see the patient, my hobby is gone. So it's more like a hobby than a work. So that keeps you alive. So now we will have some rapid fire questions. So I'll ask you a question and then you have to, uh, uh, whatever comes to your mind first, you have to give that answer and uh, it will be very short and sweet. So the first would be, if you weren't a doctor, what other profession would you, you have taken? Mathematics. Mathematics. Amazing. Absolutely. The most satisfying moment in your career? When the patient comes and tells you, you are my God. That's what they say. Oh. Sir, your inspiration to all of us. But what is your biggest inspiration? Patience. Patience? Yes. Yeah. One quality every good oncology should have. Patience to listen to the patient. Okay. Your favorite place to go after a long working day? Oh. <laughs> okay. So, uh, one word to describe your journey of these past six decades. I think it's the journey of hope. I'm seeing more and more hope, which I never used to see before. If there could be one thing that you can change about Indian healthcare system, what would that be? I think the healthcare awareness. Awareness. So coffee, tea or cold drink, what is the one that you choose in your free time? Tea. Tea? Tea. So what keeps you so humble despite being such a legendary status? So you are a Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, but you are so down to earth. So what keeps you so humble? I think it's the humility. As you grow more, you come to know that you know little. Wow. So what is your one message to all the practicing young budding cancer doctors of this country? Don't take away hope from the patient. Keep up with the hope. Hope is the most important. 
and last question for all the viewers they always ask me that if they have a cancer patient in their family so they are very scared they don't want to uh, spend time with them uh, eat in the same plate there are a lot of myths and buzzes about cancer so what one message that you want to deliver to all these caregivers of cancer patients how they should take care of their patients i think they should take care of the cancer patient as their dear relative brother sisters father mother whatever and one thing which is well known now to everybody that this disease never spreads from one person to another so nobody has to be afraid of in fact give them the again i must say hope and uh, the empathy that you need they also say that there is lot of fear that patient should not undertake a biopsy ki sui lag jayegi to cancer phailega and a uh, lot of this ayurvedic physicians who have become influencers on the social media they make lot of viral videos saying ki biopsy mat karao nahi to cancer phailega what is that we should be telling to the community i think there are a lot of myths in our society and we have to explain to these things to our patients and normally they follow us normally they always follow us. but we have to explain to them that these are all myths Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. So this was wonderful interacting with Professor Advani, Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, first person to do bone marrow transplant in this country. Very humble doctor, still practicing 12 hours a day at the age of 80, and there's so much to learn from him. Thank you for watching us. Thank you.